This is a basic linear programming problem. If we read through the problem, we see that we're talking about making bookcases and desks. The very first thing we should do in any work is try to define our variables. When we read the last sentence, we see that, that we are asked how many of each product should be made. Well, the products we're talking about are bookcase and desk. Therefore, our variables, x and y, are the number of bookcases made and the number of desks made. When we do linear programming problems, we also should know that we will have some kind of profit equation. There will be a sentence that will say something like the profit on each or the profit of each or to maximize the profit or the amount earned or something similar to that. This one has a sentence that reads the profit on each bookcase is $40 and on each desk $75. That sentence represents our profit equation. Therefore, P for profit must equal 40x plus 75y. In linear programming problems, we must also look for constraints. There are two constraints that are almost understood in every problem. X should be greater than or equal to 0, and Y should be greater than or equal to 0. In this problem, that's true because the least amount of bookcases that you can make would be zero, and the least amount of desks that you can make would be zero. Now we have to start trying to figure out the rest of our constraints. Each equation should have an x and a y in it. So each equation should be talking something about the desk and the bookcase. When we read the second sentence, and it says that each bookcase requires five hours of woodworking and four hours of finishing, Sometimes students want to write an equation involving woodworking and finishing in the same equation. Woodworking and finishing are not our variables. Bookcases and desks are our variables. So when we say that each bookcase requires five hours of woodworking, we then need to find out how many hours of woodworking the desk requires. Now, as you can see, I've circled numbers in both black and in blue. The numbers in black represent woodworking. They also represent the woodworking for the bookcase and the woodworking for the desk. The numbers in blue represent finishing for the bookcase and for the desk. Now if we're paying close attention, we have our equations. We only have 600 hours available for woodworking and 240 hours available for finishing. So if we go back and we look at this equation, this equation represents all of our woodworking with the bookcases and the desk. This equation represents all of our finishing with the bookcases and the desk. Sometimes it helps to take a pencil and underline everything involving each variable separately. Now we have our constraints, one, two, three, four, and we have our profit equation, we're ready to start making some graphs. Now, I've taken both of those equations and gotten y by themselves so that I could put them in my calculator. I also changed my window. I noticed that these two numbers are much bigger than the standard window. And if I plot them, they would actually end up being my intercepts. So my y needs to be bigger than those numbers. So I've come over and I've changed my window. First, I changed my y to 100 because that's bigger than 60 and 80. And when I graphed it, I still couldn't see where the two lines crossed each other. So I changed my x value to 50. And that made my graph a little bit better when I looked at it. Now, if you're graphing this on graph paper, you can adjust things accordingly. But because our first constraints are x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, we know that everything's going to be here in the first quadrant. If I do test points, let me go back to that. If I do test points of 0, 0 here and here, I see that those equations would be true because 0 is less than 600 and 0 is less than 240. That would narrow my graph down to this part right inside this shape here, which goes down this way comes down this way and intersects with axis down here a little bit. Now, if we keep looking at this and we start talking about shading, we do have some vertices. We have a vertice, which is right here, which is the easiest one, which is 0, 0. The one where these two lines cross, 
and the one that's down here where this line crosses the x-axis. So we do have some things that we can work with for this picture. If we go through and we do some calculations on our calculator, we can also determine where the two lines cross. So if we hit second trace number five, we see first curve, we see second curve, we see guess, so we move our cursor just a little bit where we think it crosses. We hit enter. It says it get it intersects at 24 and 48. So now we have vertices of 0, 0 and 24 and 48. Now for the last vertice, we need to do a little bit of thinking. We're looking at this line. This line crossed up here at the number 80. So that would be this line that we're looking at. It crosses here 80 and goes down and crosses the x-axis somewhere down here. So that means that if it crosses the x-axis, the y value is 0. So if I put a 0 here in place of y, I get 4x is 240, which means that x is 60. So now we have our third vertice, which would be the point 60, 0. We also have this line right here. It's crossing the x-axis, so at this point, x is 0 and y is something else. That's a line that crossed up here at 60. So if we go back and look at the information we have, that's this line. So if we put 0 in for x, 10y equals 600, which means that y equals 60. So we have a now of 0, 60. That's our fourth and final vertice. Now what we want to do is plug all of these numbers one at a time into our property equation. We want to put 0 in for x and 0 in for y right here, and 24 and 48 into the same equation, 60 and 0 into that same equation, and 0 and 60 into that same equation, and see what p is equal to in each case. If you do the math, these are the figures that you come up with. As you can see, 4560 is the largest number which has an ordered pair of 24, 48. That means that we want to make 24 bookcases and 48 desks to maximize our profit.